<clears throat> hey guys, how are you doing? You little cyber bully. I don't love Jojo, he's stupid. <laughs> This creepy guy that thinks he is a K-pop star. So that's the way you want it, yeah? Today, this video... It's gonna be a serious video. Ali London deleted social media, he deleted Twitter, Instagram, and, and that's it. But, I, I think this is for a, a good reason. Now, this is not the type of, you know, the, the typical video that I would upload on this channel just because this channel is so... What is it? It's just so good, you know? <laughs> I've seen one of them talking about me and he was stupid. A very special insider, Oli London's in the studio. Hello! Hello, Isaac. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, no, thank you for reaching out to us. I think this is the first time we've ever gotten a chance to interview somebody who's reached out to us first. Oli Ayo. This channel... To a certain extent before, it really felt like my channel. I could upload whatever I wanted on there. It could be bad quality, it could be good quality. And people wouldn't watch it, <laughs> but I don't blame them, okay? It was terrible. Now that this channel has become so... It has just grown such a huge audience under such a short amount of time. I still do upload what I want to upload. All those stupid things that you see on my channel. Everything that you saw on this channel, I did want to make them. But then during the process of making them, I just really felt like... No, I, I, I don't really... This is not really what I would do to make the video. Sometimes the video will go from one editor to another editor and back to me just to make one one final product when what I just wanted to do was just create the video. And then I've fallen victim to this kind of strange internet addiction. That's just, it, it, it just. Hey guys, so I know a lot of people have um, been worried or messaging my friends or Frenchie um, regarding my Twitter and Instagram deactivation. Internet 21, I would just stick with the platform. It's such a toxic place. Twitter is so negative. There's nothing nice on there. It's really not a place where people praise other people. It's not a nice place where people- Now, I've already seen this video and I, I couldn't agree more with Ollie London than I could ever have. And this is not, this is not some stupid silly joke again, okay? Not like when I stabbed him in the face. Oh, that is so scary. I'm simply a place where people attack, bully, and harass people. I think that that's the best decision that he could have ever made. It's like we've all in this generation have fallen victim to, to this, this kind of, this kind of sense of instant gratification. It's like parents telling us that you want to be this and you just go ahead and do it and then you can, you can succeed. But then this isn't the case at all. And then you start to develop this kind of stigma that you can't get everything that you want. And then this weighs you down even more because people grow up like, oh, you want to do this? Then you just do it. You want to be a doctor. Ah, you be a doctor. You so you want me to teach you how to flirt in Korean, yeah? Mm, I'm not so fluent, but this works. Swipe right. You can drink alcohol. A little bit is fine. But then too much of it, it's horrible. And once you're in another stressful situation, you kind of fall back to this alcohol. The same thing goes for gambling. Um, you, it could be fun to a certain extent. But then you do too much of it, and then it's really dangerous. They have to fall back to something, and then that thing will be gambling for them. But, but for people like Ollie Don't London, for, for most of you way. watching this video, and for me, we use social media as this kind of gambling mechanism. So it kind of serves as this addiction that because of bad parenting, we tend to have lower self-esteem because we realize that we cannot get what we want directly. So we kind of fall back to social media, but then social media, for example, you get a text, Wow, feels great, right? That's because like your dopamine in your system is just it's just it's just running through. And then you have to get this constant stimulus of this dopamine effect. You tend to avoid those things that that typically would give someone a deep fulfilling joy. But instead, you fall back to social and media. That no, it's not someone's around. fault for feeling the way that Ollie that London does. Around. Gone full circle. <laughs> We've gone from me making fan account in this shirt. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that we're just a generation growing up with lower self-esteem and, and no coping mechanism. Since I was six years old, I was told, ah, if you are not a doctor, you are not my son anymore. Ah, 
Uh, how, how do you know that PhD? Uh, you're already 10 years old. No, of course, I'm exaggerating. I'm gonna talk about this more on my second channel because my parents don't check that channel. <laughs> but this weird channel. Then woke up the next day, checked uh, online, and I saw it was trending in the United States. It's the number three hashtag in the United States. Only allowed to deactivate it, party. I wanted to get away from it. And then suddenly I wake up and I see trending in the United States, trending around the world on Twitter. Like honestly, taking a look at some of the comments, some of them are just so shallow. And even I feel like I shouldn't have done this this whole thing with Ollie London. If you love BTS, you should have known that you should love yourself. But since you did the complete opposite from what they said, it shows that you have been loved them from their looks. This comment, this just... It's so stupid. Like yes, in in a video where Ollie London wouldn't be isn't so distressed, I probably make fun of this and then go along with this with this comment. But then another thing that he points out is that there's no age restriction on this bullying on the internet. What's even more stupid about this is Twitter does nothing about it, and also you know there are no ID checks. People all have this have this untethered access to these dopamine producing social media. It's, it's kind of hardwired in our brain that you cannot form deep and meaningful relationships because you have to go at something you know you have to go full force at something and if you don't get the attention that you were told while growing up that you could get then you're gonna be even worse and then you just go at them again it's like the same thing as having a table full of, of beer open oh hey child are you feeling a little stressed out today hey hey you you want to check out this one it's beer man it's alcohol man but instead people go on their social media and 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 see these these things like people make fake accounts me all the time i have many fan accounts which is i love and i'm really really grateful for like it's wow this nice. person it's is performing better. extra well on social media oh i have to be that great too you see like ollie london's career is just so much more dangerous than mine and it, it's maintained by this constantly having to fulfill this persona that he, he built on the internet and that's having to do plastic surgery to look like Jimin. You no, know, every day I listen to BTS and Jimin and they cheer me up, they make me happy. And I, to be honest, I don't think he enjoys doing that anymore. And you really have to uphold this kind of promise that you made with your viewers that your content is gonna be the best thing ever. But then imagine this is Ollie London and he has to do it with plastic surgery of like basically life-threatening things. You don't care, you're just sat in your room all sad, lonely, on your own depressed, insecure with yourself, you look in the mirror, you see a disgusting reflection of a person that's, you know, you hate yourself, you hate yourself. If to be honest, I, this is the point that I agree with him the most on. So because of this lowered, you know, social coping mechanism that everyone has, you have to rely on this kind of, of, you know, social interaction, which involves bullying. And everyone has this kind of abstract concept of, of what impact they should make. So when you make a really fulfilling tweet, Boom! Oh my god, so many likes! Only London has, uh, is nibbling on my little feet. 80 likes, man! Crazy! I'ma do it again! And then it, it just it just ends up in this in this loop. It's like how are you ever gonna get this instant gratification of going to the exact summit of the mountain of peak success right away when you don't see the rest of the mountain? What the fuck am I now? Like fucking Shakespeare or some shit? Like a Korean Shakespeare? People don't see this this long journey that it takes. So they they have to rely on this this instant high that they need and and they tend to rely on social media because it is so readily accessible. Now we're all at the, now that my mountain is your mountain. <laughs> if you go online and troll someone else, you know, it's fine to have an opinion, it's fine if you disagree with someone, but if you go online and troll someone, and they say, oh, you should die, I'm gonna shoot you, let's kill him, which I get every day, I get people saying they're gonna kill me every day. It's really, really disgusting, and these people are just sad, sad, sad losers. I just had surgery to look like an idol I just had surgery and I know I'm out of control oh. So much cartilage from my nose, so not a night though I'm out of control, I wanna look like Jimin You're European, you're not Korean, so why won't you listen? I just had surgery to look like an idol I just had surgery And I know I'm out of control I just had surgery To look like an idol I just had surgery And I know I'm out of control